hey guys welcome back to my channel um, my name is Sheila in today's video we are going to be making this pretty corset top inspired by Ali Jean who is a crochet artist from the Philippines I believe uh, thanks so much for inspiring this design so um, I saw her creations and I came up with my own definition of a corset top and um, the materials that I'm going to be using are 24-7 cotton by Lion Brand. This is 100 grams and uh, it recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook but I'll be using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook to achieve stitches that are a bit tighter. And then a pair of scissors, a uh, darning needle and a measuring tape to take some measurements. And I would really recommend this yarn if you can access it, please go ahead and buy this because it gave me a very good result. So uh, let's jump into the video and we learn how to make this very pretty corset top. So we're going to first take some measurements. Uh, let's say this is your breast and that's the nipple. Sorry if my art is bad. But this is your nipple and this is your breast. This is the best way I can explain it. This is the end of your breast on both sides. Like that. You're going to measure from the exact middle of your chest. Let's say this is the chest. And this is the edge where your breast stops. Where it, where it ends. And you're going to take that measurement. And then the other thing is or this is where you want your top to stop this curve here because it's in corset form so this is where you want this curve to stop you're going to take that measurement let's say x and then the other thing is to measure from this end to your nipple half of that measurement so let me go ahead and measure mine um Mine is about seven to eight inches. So that means uh, the fullest measurement of your bust, mine is 32 divided by four. Cause we are taking off the back part and we're only considering the front part, but only half of the front part. So I have my eight inches. So that's the measurement that we are going to consider first. So let's get started. Let me put this away. You're going to grab your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and your yarn. And uh, we are going to first make a slip knot. And we are going to chain two. So one and two. And into the very first chain that we made, we are going to go in there with a total of three half double crochets. One, two, and three. So we have our three half double crochets. Now we are going to do row two, chain one, turn your work, plus one half double crochet into the very first stitch. And into the second stitch, which is the middle stitch, you're going to go in there with a total of three half double crochets. Two and three. And then into the last stitch, you're going to go in there with one half double crochet. Now we're going to go onto the next row, which is row three, chain one, turn your work. Plus a total of, sorry, Plus one half double crochet into the very first stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, and now this is the exact middle stitch. We're going to go in there with a total of three half double crochets. One, two, and three. And then in the last two, you're going to place one half double crochet in each. So if you can't eyeball your stitches, you may consider having a stitch marker 
to always mark the middle stitch. So we are going to repeat this, chain one, turn your work, one half double crochet into the next three stitches and that will bring you to the exact middle point which is this one and in the middle stitch you're going to place a total of three half double crochets. So we have our three half double crochets there and now we're going to go into the next three stitches with one half double crochet into each of those stitches. So this is what we have. Now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's for row four. Row five, same thing, chain one, half double crochet into each of the first stitches before the middle stitch. So I have my four half double crochets and that brings me to the exact middle. And into the middle stitch, you're going to place a total of three half double crochets. This is the third. And then one half double crochet in the remaining four stitches. So we are done with row 5, we are going to row 6 and it's just a repeat of this row, we do the same exact thing. The only change is that um, we keep increasing at the exact middle point of each and every row. So I'm here increasing again and then one half double crochet into all the remaining stitches. So this is row 6 and I want a total of 8 rows. I'm going to be explaining why. Let me first get done with my 8 rows. So right now I'm on row 8, So at the end of row 8 you should be having a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 stitches. Now um, I'm going to grab my tape measure and this measures about 3 inches across. But remember the measurement that I got was 8 inches and then we got half of 8 and that was four. We want a total of four inches. Yeah? So um, I believe two rows of this almost comes to a total of one inch. That's why I have left out two rows. So after doing my two rows here, I'll be at a total of four inches. Remember, I'm not stretching my work yet because um, we need our piece to be as stretchy as it can be because um, we're going to be doing some edgings that make the work tighter. So I'm at three inches. If you had a total of, let me say, five inches, you're going to continue doing this until you're at four inches. Yeah. And then we do two extra rows that don't have any increases. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I have one, two, three, four, five, 
one two three four five six seven and eight rows and that's for my size which is a small to medium ish so um you're going to chain one on row eight row nine and you're going to do a plain row of half double crochets not placing increases in the middle just going all the way across with one half double crochet into each and every stitch so we shall have a total of 17 half double crochets Okay, that's row 9 and row 10 will give me 17 half double crochets still. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 half double crochets. So at this point, I could say we are here. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm here at this point. This is where the nipple should be. This is the exact mid of our breast. And... We are now going to the other side. That means we are going to be decreasing to create this same exact shape onto this side. So, remember we did a total of two rows and that has brought us to our four inches. If I'm right, this is exactly four inches. Just that now it's folding a bit because of that tension around here without the increases. But this should bring us to our four inches. So we're going to chain one and do our two rows on the other side, the two rows that don't have any increases. So you're going to continue to work 17 half double crochets for two more rows. But this time round, they're going to be on the other side. We are done with this first half of the breast and now we are on the second half of the breast. So what you do here is exactly what you do on the other side so that we balance our bra up. Okay, so that's one row. And I'm going to make my second row. So So whatever number that you're having for um, your last row, which is row 12, you're going to identify the exact middle stitch. So for me, 17, that means the exact middle stitch is number nine, stitch number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You're going to mark that stitch. I don't have my stitch markers with me right now. So I'll just mark it with a string. So if you have 21, mark the 11th stitch. Just find the exact middle and mark it because you're going to start doing something different. We've done our four rows of no increases and this is the exact middle of our bra cup. So um, you're going to chain one 
for row 13 or whatever row you're on right now because I believe we are on different rows basing on your measurement and also the stretch of the yarn that you're using. So chain one, go into the very first stitch with one half double crochet and half double crochet until you have one stitch to the exact middle stitch. And for me that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches before I got to this stitch that's next to the one in the middle. You're going to remove this stitch marker. And then you're going to prepare for a half double crochet. Insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the exact middle stitch, pull up a loop. And insert your hook into the third stitch there. You're going to have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all. Yeah? And then you're going to prepare for a half double crochet and go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and half double crochet. Now we are doing decreases. So um, this is our very first stitch after the decrease. Then this is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh the reason why I'm counting these stitches is because we had seven stitches before we did the decrease that means you should have the same exact number of stitches after you do the decrease so each end of the decrease should be balanced so we're going to the next row which is row 14 you're going to chain one turn your work Half double crochet into the next six stitches. I'm saying six because we have reduced our, our stitches already. So for row 13, you had seven stitches on the ends. Row 14, you're going to have six and then five, four, three, two, one until we close up this end. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Or if, if you're not understanding this uh, explanation, you can go ahead and still mark the exact middle stitch of this row. But I'm not going to do that because I know exactly how to find it. So after your six um, stitches here, you're going to go into this next stitch, pull up a loop, have three loops on your hook, insert your hook into the next stitch, Pull up a loop and insert your hook into the last stitch pull up a loop you should have five loops on your hook yarn over pull through all and then one half double crochet into all the remaining six stitches i'm saying six because we had six on this side so those are two three four five and six so if you don't have the same number of stitches on both ends that means you're making a mistake somewhere so you're going to chain one turn your work now we should be going to five so one half double crochet into the first stitch two three four and five then make a decrease so yarn over insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop should have three loops on your hook insert your hook pull up a loop insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop and yarn over pull through all make sure this stitch is a bit tight we don't want big holes and then after this you're going to go into each of the next five stitches and complete our row so this is what you should have Chain one, turn your work. We are doing the same exact thing. One, two, three, and now there are four. Make a decrease. And then one half double crochet into the remaining four stitches. So I'm rushing through because I believe now you know what to do. Chain one, turn your work. Now you should have three. One two and three make a decrease 
and then one half double crochet into the remaining three stitches chain one turn your work now you should have two stitches before the decrease two and then prepare for a decrease and then one half double crochet into the remaining two stitches chain one turn your work now you should have one stitch before the decrease so one half double crochet into the first stitch then prepare for a decrease so we have decreased now and then one half double crochet into the very last stitch and now you have three stitches you're going to just turn your work you're not going to chain one you're going to slip stitch into the very last stitch and that will close up this uh, end of the of the bra cup so this is what you should have you should see your shape forming that bra cup shape it shouldn't be flat at all and if it forms this don't try to straighten it so now we are going to the second part of our bra cup which is the upper part so um we're not going to be building our bra cup upwards the coverage that's going to go up above our breast so you're going to chain one half double crochet into the very first row And then two half double crochets into the second so we are going to alternate between that one half double crochet into the next two half double crochets into the next one half double crochet into the next two half double crochets into the next repeat that all the way across So we're going in into the rows, the spaces of the rows. So I'm ending my row with my one half double crochet into the very last row. And I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I have a total of 28 rows, 28 uh, half double crochets across the top now for row two <coughs> you're going to chain one turn your work skip the very first stitch and half double crochet into the next and then all the way across So that's row two of the upper coverage. So we're not doing a decrease at the end of the row. You're going to go into the very last stitch with a half double crochet. And then row three, you're going to chain one, turn your work, skip the very first stitch, and then go into the second with a half double crochet, and continue to half double crochet all the way to the end without making a decrease at the end of your row.
So we're coming to the end of the third row. There you go. Um, now on my fourth row, and I'm going to repeat the same exact thing. Chain one, turn your work, skip the very first stitch, and then half double crochet across. And I want a total of five rows. Let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you back when I have that finished. So I've worked my five rows of the upper coverage, and this is how my work looks like. Now um, we're going to do something different. We are going to be working around our broke up, not around, but sideways all the way down to this other end, from here up to here. And now for that, you are going to chain one, half double crochet into the very first row, and then two half double crochets into the next row. One half double crochet into the next row, two half double crochets into the next row, one half double crochet into the next row, and then now we are on the body of the of this piece. Now we are supposed to do two half double crochets, but the way I want to do that is to go here in between the three half double crochets so that I don't have this hole. So I'm going in between the stitches and I place one and then I go on the side of the row and I place the second one. So that's it. And then one half double crochet into the next row, two half double crochets into the next. And as I work this, I'm moving in this tail that was from the beginning of our project so that we get rid of it. Then one half double crochet into the next row two half double crochets into the next and we are going to continue this until we get to the other end of the broke up So I'm on this side again where we have the three half double crochets. I've placed my first half double crochet in on the side of the row and then my second one will be somewhere here. And then one half double crochet into the next row, two half double crochets, one half double crochet, two half double crochets, and then one half double crochet into the very final row and I want to place one last half double crochet in that stitch here to just make a flat edging and that's it this is how your cup will look like now we're going to do some other things to the cup you can see I've already done some it's called bonding or something uh, this I'm going to put on the upper layer, the middle here, and around. This creates a better shaping of our corset top, and it looks really good with those lines, other than having it plain like this. So that's what we are going to do right now. I'm going to chain one and cut my yarn. We shall get back to this point later on. But we are going to first work on that part of the uh, shaping of the broke up. So 
we're going to start with the the one that goes around here here all the way to here sorry from here all the way to here the one that goes around the bar cup and then we shall do the one in the middle here so you're going to have your work on the right side the side that you want the people to see because that's where we want to create these ridges i'm going to go into that corner here attach my yarn chain one and fold over my work so you should be seeing a hole here there's this side and then there's this side but you should be seeing a hole there you're going to go in there with one single crochet and then you're going to skip the next two stitches and go you're folding your work over remember that we are folding this and we go into that space with two single crochets then one single crochet into the next space and two single crochets into the next one and two then one single crochet into the next you have to be very careful when making these so that you don't blunder then two single crochets into the next one single crochet into the next two single crochets into the next and we are going to repeat that all the way around this is going to create that boning effect that shaping of our back up so this is one and then two in the next one into the next and two into the next one and two one into the next two into the next you should notice that sometimes you skip one one half double crochet sometimes it's two half double crochets that's because that was the pattern for our very last row before we started this so this is what we are creating so continue two single crochets and then one single crochet then two single crochets and then one single crochet two single crochets one single crochet sorry two one two one two one two one i won't explain a formula to this just find the most suitable place to play to to put your single crochet because uh it's kind of confusing but you have to just be consistent so that this looks neat so i have two here and now um i'm not going to be placing in the very last one because i want to create that same effect 
on the second last row which is this one so I'm going to fold over the last row like this and I'm going to go in between these two loops there's this one and the one above it I'm going to chain one so that I don't create a strain on this piece and I'm going to grab both loops like that and single crochet and do that all the way across so for this upper row I just went into each and every stitch with one single crochet and this is what it created and now I'm coming to the end here I'll place one last one here I don't want to create any holes if you see any hole try to cover it up so after this you're going to um, chain one and go into the very first single crochet that you made with a slip stitch to wind up this boning on this side then chain one and cut your yarn we shall weave in those ends later so that's what we have for now we still have these rows on the edge and those are the rows that are going to be building the lower body of our top and the sides of the top and now we're going to be creating the one here and that one is not going to just be a row of plain half doubles uh, sorry a, a row of plain singles it's going to be something different we are also going to be doing the same exact thing as we did on this outer part of the piece because there is some shaping involved so that means we can't do plain single crochets because we shall be killing the shape of the top so you're going to get your yarn make a slip a slip knot and we are folding over this row the the very first row of um, the upper coverage we want our line to be here so we are folding over this like this and I want to get something very close to this so that we attach that piece together when we are weaving in the ends so I'll go into this space here so I'm attaching my yarn here there and I'm going into the very first space I'm going to chain one and go into the very first space with one single crochet and then the next space two single crochets and that's the pattern for this part I don't know how to explain this but you find the most suitable spot after the stitches on this row so one and then two on the next and then one I'm going to repeat this all the way across one two one two one Two, one,
so I've made it a curse and this is what we have and I'm going to find a spot and I put my very last one close to the boning on this side so that I can attach them together so after this one I'm going to chain one and go into the very the closest stitch to this and make a slip stitch so I don't think I have to chain one I think I just have to go straight into that stitch and make a slip stitch like that and I'm going to chain one cut my yarn So this is what we have at the moment. You're going to go ahead and make this same exact piece for your bra cup and then I'll show you what to do next after there. So I'm back with my two bra cups ready. This is a bit big because I've tried it on my dummy and now it has the full stretch of the normal bra cup. This is still a bit intact but I'll, I'll do the same thing for it. But they should be identical. Now uh, you're going to attach your yarn on... We're going to first work on the middle part of our corset top. Uh, we are going to first do the shaping for the middle part, then we shall go onto the sides. So this is where I want my yarn attached. Attach it to any side that you feel like should be the middle, the exact middle part of your top at the front. Chain one, turn your work. And you're going to So you're going to chain one and then half double crochet into the very first stitch and I want a total of 23 uh, half double crochets. If you want it bigger you can go to 25. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven eight nine remember we didn't attach our yarn to the boning that is left alone we don't uh, tamper with it so nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20. Sorry, I meant 20, not 23. So if you want it bigger, you can go to 22. So right now I have my 20 half double crochets. And I'm going to chain one, turn my work. Now I'm going to go... Um, into the second stitch skip this one half double crochet into the next one single crochet into the next one single crochet into the next one slip stitch into the next one but don't make it so tight and then slip stitch into the next one and now you're going to turn your work go uh, skip the very first slip stitch here and go into the second with a slip stitch there and then single crochet into the next half double crochet into the next and half double crochet into the next and then the next row you're going to chain one turn your work And then you're going to skip the very first stitch and go into the second with a half double crochet, half double crochet into the next stitch, which was a single crochet, half double crochet into the next stitch, which was a slip stitch, 
and then half double crochet into the next stitch and you can see this very big gap I'm going to go under and I grab this loop here and half double crochet in that and continue to half double crochet all the way up to um, until you have two stitches left So this is what we have and I have two stitches left right now I have this one and this one I'll go into the very last one I'll skip over the second last one and go into the very last one and then I'm going to chain one turn my work skip the first stitch half double crochet into the second all the way down until I have two stitches left So I have two stitches left right now. I'll skip over this one and go into the very last one with a half double crochet, chain one, turn my work, skip the very first one, half double crochet into the next, and continue to half double crochet until you have two stitches left. We're going to repeat this, decreasing both at the beginning and at the end until we run out of stitches. So I have two stitches left, sorry, these are three. So now I have two stitches left, skip over this and jump into the very last one with a half double crochet, chain one turn, skip the first stitch, go into the second. So let me go off camera and I continue to work this until I run out of stitches. And I'll show you what to do after that. And we're going to go all the way up until you have two stitches left you're going to skip over this and half double crochet into this last one chain one turn your work skip over this very first one and half double crochet all the way across so we're going to just be decreasing on only one side and that's the upper part of our top and then for the lower part we are not going to be doing any decreases So since this is the lower side, that's the reason why I didn't decrease. I'm just keeping it constant. So continue to decrease at the end of the row when you're on this side and then also decrease at the beginning of the row when you're on this side only. Don't make any decreases on this side. So this is what decreasing on only one side is going to create. We were decreasing on only this side and then we left this constant. We weren't decreasing at all. And I'm still decreasing my very last time. Now I have two stitches left. And then I'm going to chain one, turn my work. On this side I'm not supposed to decrease. So I'll just go into that stitch with one half double crochet and that's the pointed part of this uh, side. 
we're going to leave a long strand because we will be joining it to the other side so this is how our um broke ups plus the lower part look like here and now we're going to do the same exact thing on this piece and we create that elongated part and then I'll be back to show you what to do next just attach your yarn here and do the same exact thing that we did here but this time it's on this side not on this side because the broke ups are supposed to be placed this way so let me go ahead and do that and then I'll be back to show you what to do next all right so we are back I did this side and this side and now we are going to attach our yarn on this end and do the same exact thing for the extension towards the back I hope you get this this is the middle the exact middle of the corset top this is the middle of your chest and then this is the extension towards your back so we are going to do the same exact thing here so let me grab my yarn you're going to attach your yarn on the upper side of your bra cup and by the upper side I mean uh, this side not this side so we are working all the way down 20 stitches and then we do the same exact thing so let me record this on camera chain one half double crochet into the very first stitch and then all the way down for a total of 20 half double crochets so we have three right now four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen and 20 so you can see we are moving towards this extension but we are not going to close it up completely you can see there are some stitches in between so uh, you have nothing to worry about so you're going to rewind your video and see how you made your very first extension here and do the same exact thing on this side so we shall have two extensions um, extending towards our back like from the rib cage towards the back side of your top and then I'll meet you back when I have that finished all right so um, after your two extensions don't mind this I'm going to be showing you how to do it on this side I've already worked it on one side so remember the very long strand that we left on one of the extensions when we were making our very first extension we are going to start joining uh, the middle sections together so you're going to get your tapestry needle and put that strand through it was here down here so we're going to join row by row but this is completely optional this is because um, I know people have different width for their um, chests so if you feel like the bra cups are very close to each other and when you wear this piece it's going to be a little bit too small then uh, you may consider just uh, creating these loops at this point and then you lace it up so that it's adjustable to your size that's for the larger sizes but for a small to medium i think this is completely fine because this yarn is really stretchy and gives a very good fitting so that's uh something you can consider when you're making for a bigger size 
so I'm going to just join row to row I'm very bad at hand stitching but I'm trying to learn so I'm just going into each and every row and joining it to the one on the opposite side So just make sure your work is neat. Whichever way you decide to do it, you can join using a single crochet row. You can join using a slip stitch row, as long as you don't tamper with uh, the assembling of this top. So, So this is how it's coming out and I really like this effect. It's giving us a different detail in the middle, in the middle section of our top. So we are almost coming to the upper part and you have to be very careful if the top is a bit big is a bit small you're going to have to leave some rows for it to push outwards if it's too big then you you'll need to close up all the rows all the way up to the very first row of extension that you made so for me I think uh, the top was perfectly fine so I'll close up until the second row of the extension. I think that's where I'll stop and just leave one row of the extension. So I'm going into that space with two stitches and then I turn my work to the back. Remember the back side is the one that doesn't have these ridges. So the back side is more plain. So after this, I'm going to just insert my hook so that I go to the back side like this and then weave in this end. We have so many ends to weave in at the end of this project, but it's okay. We shall take our time and weave them in. I'm just going into a few stitches here and there so that I get rid of this strand. Make sure you weave it in very well because it's very crucial when it comes to this design. Once it un, uh, unravels, then uh, the whole top will fall apart. So that's why I'm going into very many stitches. Okay, I think this will be enough. After weaving in this end, you are going to cut your yarn and at this point the middle section is done so I'm going to be showing you how to work this edging onto this side so you're going to attach your yarn on this end because I want my very last row to be worked on the wrong on the wrong side of my work so that means the second last row, which is this one, the mesh row, should be worked on the right side so that I come back on the wrong side, creating the pico stitch. So let's begin. All right, so you're going to attach your yarn 
on this extension the extension towards the back so attach your yarn chain four one two three and four go into the next row which is this one with a double crochet chain one go into the next row with a double crochet chain one and that's what we are going to do all the way down to the base of the extension chain one go into the second row the next row sorry so we are going into each and every row with a double crochet but then chaining one in between continue to do that until you get to this point and i'll show you what to do after that all right so i've come to the very first row of extension after the broke up this is what you should be having so after this you're going to chain one skip this next stitch go into the next with a double crochet but don't finish it skip this next stitch and go into the next double crochet the next stitch sorry this is not a double crochet this is actually a half double crochet so prepare for a second um, double crochet and skip this next stitch go into the next with a double crochet so you're going to finish like that so we've done two double crochets together at this point then you're going to chain one skip the next stitch and go into the next row with a double crochet so what we've created here is something to pull our top in because this is a corner and you don't want it to open up like this we want it to be more on at this angle so that's why we did that so you're going to continue to chain one and go into each and every row with one double crochet all the way down to the base of the extension so you're going to continue that all the way to this point so I've placed my very last uh, double crochet into the very last row of the extension this is what we should have something like this and this is okay you're going to chain one and turn your work we are doing our very final row this should be the wrong side of your work now we're going to go into the very first box and single crochet there and then chain three and then slip stitch at the base of that single crochet and after that you're going to single crochet into the same box single crochet into the next box and then single crochet into the next box so we have a total of three single crochets after the picot stitch we have the one that goes in the same exact box and then this one and this one and then you're going to chain three slip stitch at the base of that uh, chain go into that same box with a single crochet single crochet into the next box and single crochet into the next so that's what we are creating you can see we are matching exactly what we did on this side onto this side and when we turn our work our spikes are going to be popping on the outside part of our top so i hope you can see that continue to do that all the way across your uh, mesh row so make sure you evenly place these spikes so that the work can look very uniform So what you do on the other side is exactly what you do on this side so that we can have a balanced top yeah. 
when you place your work down on the floor or on your table when you're working, you should be seeing the same exact thing happening on both sides. So since we had this on this side, we have the same exact thing going on here. So I'll weave in this end later. I'm going to continue to work until I come to the end here and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so I've come to the end of my row and I'm going to chain one and uh, I'm going to cut my yarn. This is what you should have. Now, um, I've already worked one of the straps and I noticed something. I would want to go across my uh, top with a row of at least uh, at least single crochets to make it just a bit neater and more uniform so I'm going to cut off this strap sorry for that I'm going to cut off that strap so that we go back to this this is what you should be having because for you you haven't yet worked any straps so um i'm going to attach my yarn on this side sorry i'm trying to overthink it because i'm i'm creating this design as i record it's not something that I planned at all, so bear with me. I'm going into the very first row with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to go into the very first row with a single crochet, go into the next row with a single crochet, and then the next row get two single crochets. I'm trying not to overstress uh, the tension on this uh, upper side of our top. So single crochet into the next, single crochet into the next, and two single crochets into the next. Because I feel like if I just do one single crochet per row, this piece is going to uh, start pulling together. Then one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two in the next. I think this gives it a very good balance so that it remains flat. Then one single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochets. One single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochets. One, one, and two in the next row. Then one, one. So we are coming to the top part of our bra cup. And then two in the next. I'm going to pull this strands behind. Okay, our two single crochets are there. So when we come to the body of the bra cups, we are just going to place one single crochet into each and every half double crochet. So one here, all the way down, one single crochet into each. Because this we don't want to tamper with its shape. This is just optional. If you don't feel like doing this, then don't. I'm just making the edges neater so that it looks like a planned project. So, also to give it a better finish. I think this is way better than having it like this. Okay, some people wouldn't see the difference, but I do. I always like to give the final touch to my pieces. And I think the single crochet row for this particular top gives it a better fitting. 
on the upper side so that it's not so stretchy because single crochets are tighter so it's giving us that shape of the cup so I'm going all the way down okay so when we get here we have some weird things going on you're going to just find somewhere to place single crochets so i don't know what row this is but i've gone there with a single crochet and then i'm going to skip over this very middle stitch whatever is going on here there are two stitches there are like two rows there's this and this so I'll go into this one and then skip over these two that I'm seeing here and then go into the next one with a single crochet so that I don't tamper with the uh, with this shape that pointed shape towards the cleavage and then I'll go into the next just try your best to place the single crochets in the most suitable place and then go all the way up So I'm still placing only one single crochet into each and every half double crochet across the top part of our bra cup. This is what you should have at this moment. You can see the single crochet has really helped to emphasize the shape of the bra cups. This is what we have. And if it's more like a 3D now. You can see that it creates uh, more accommodation for our bust. So after here, we're going to go back to um, one, one, two. So one single crochet. Let me see. The very last stitch here got two single crochets. So I'll start with that. Two single crochets in this row then one in the next and one in the next so we are back to that pattern two in this row one in the next and one in the next two in the next one in the next and one in the next so you're going to do that all the way down So I'm in my very last stitch and I'm going to place one single crochet there. And this is what you should be having at this point. If you want to work your uh, top upwards some more, then you're going to have to do another row and keep building your work upwards. But I'm not going to do that because this is very fine with me. You can also bring this pickle stitch on top here. I think it would look really nice. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is the straps. So attach your yarn 
at this point. So I want to attach my yarn in a line that's uh, almost in the same line as this ribbing, that ribbing here on the side. So I'm just going to look above it and just get a stitch there and attach my yarn. Single crochet into that same exact stitch and chain two. And then double crochet into the next stitch. So chain three and double crochet in between these two stitches. Chain three, double crochet in between the stitches below. So that's what, how I'm going to build my uh, strap until I have a total of 50 segments or however long you want your strap to be. So this is what it looks like. Actually, this can stay behind because it's still going behind. So this is how your corset top will look like. So we are creating straps at this point. The straps that are going to go behind our neck and then into these holes that we created for our mesh row. So that was the plan. I did this mesh row on purpose knowing that it's going to create a loop for us to uh, lace up our top when we are finalizing the design. So go ahead and make your strap and then we will meet when we are fin finishing up. All right, so this is how your top should look like when you are done with your straps. So we're going to turn it to the back. And for those who have done my tops, this is just one basic way of lacing up your tops at the back. So you're going to bring the one on this side into the mesh row, so into that space, that very first box of the mesh row on the opposite side. So we're going to have something like this. And then you're going to bring this to the opposite side as well. And then you will tie this to this. I know the back is open. I'm planning on releasing a video where the back is not too open like this. It's still in uh, progress. I'm still thinking about um, the best design option for me and this is basically it. This is how the back will look like and this is how the front will look like. Okay, so um, after finishing up my top and trying it on uh, and also on my dummy because my dummy gives me the better fitting for my pieces. I realized that this space was too open so I closed it up even further by about five stitches up you may consider doing that if you're uh, one of those people who created a gap in between so that you can lace up then you're going to create those uh, holes until about uh, five stitches into the brack up section then um, the other thing i want to do is i didn't like the way this came out when uh, it was tried on. So I'm going to grab my yarn and find a better way to make it look. So I'm going to attach it here where I left off with this. Actually, I want to do it on the right side of my work. So this side and I am going to attach my yarn up there next to the pico stitch there and then I'll chain one and then go into the exact middle of your work that line where you started stitching up the middle part and grab 
you're going to make a double crochet there and then sorry I'm just trying to make it look uniform so I'm going to chain three make a pickle stitch at the base of that chain just like we had on this side and then go into that same exact space with one more double crochet and then you're going to chain two and then chain three and then come into the fourth chain one two three into the fourth you're going to place a slip stitch that will create your pico stitch here and then chain one more and go into that same exact space with one double crochet uh, and then sorry I'm just trying to work as I think of the best way to do this then you're going to chain three slip stitch at the base of that chain and then one more double crochet into the middle so we have a total of four double crochets in that middle space let me see this yeah we have a total of four because this was the very last stitch from our uh, previous top and then after this you are going to chain one and then slip stitch here on top here next to the pico stitch and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so let's see how that has come out um i was trying to create a pointed part of this mesh pattern and i think this looks better planned than what we had before because it was just a space and it looked blank and looked like uh, we didn't plan for it so that's how i made the changes So go ahead and weave in all your ends you can see you have too much to weave in we kept cutting our yarn here and there so that's the end of this video I hope you guys liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you in my next video bye